Hi folks, welcome back. How do you like my new grinder? Well, it's not really new. It's not really a grinder. It's technically called a grinder polisher. You notice this side over here you can put buffing wheels and such on. I bought it from a, a blacksmith out in the country and kind of took a big leap of faith buying it because the arbor was locked up and he had no way to plug it in to see if it worked. In fact, he had owned it and had never been able to plug it in because he didn't have three-phase. So, taking all that into consideration, I drug it home. I can rewire almost anything down here and if I have to, the motor can be rebuilt. So, one of the things was, there's no badges on here anywhere. There's this one up here, but you can't read anything on it. I even looked under black light and, and, and sprayed some chemical on it. Nothing. It's got a cast-in number here that I tried an internet search and couldn't find anything on it. But I knew it was a good quality one because of one little thing. Down here... Down here is a very intricate shelf. That's a nice casting. And only a really decent tool company would put the effort into making something like that. So I was pretty happy with that. Came back and started looking at old tool catalogs. Quickly figured out they don't make these anymore. And then I found it. I found it in an old tool catalog. I don't remember the date it is, but it's made by the Cincinnati Electrical Tool Company. Imagine that. Tonight I'm going to go over it because I'm in need of its services. Working on the 10EE, working on the bridge port too at the same time, and I need to polish up handles and uh, uh, polish nuts and bolts and get them all ready. So my plan is to put a buffing wheel on this side and a wire brush, a brass wire brush on this side. Before I go on, a little update about the Monarch 10EE. We are working through the design for the electronics, but what I'm going to do now is work on this bed. Uh, I need to measure it and see just how bad it is. I had taken a scraper, a hand scraper, and was able to scrape some of it. So that led me to believe it wasn't that hard. But we're going to measure it and see how bad it is. And in that vein, my uh, Bridgeport project, there was just going to be a simple throw some parts in it and get it going, has turned into a monster. There's the knee over there. I laid this down on the back so I can measure these. As you can see right here, you can see some of the frosting up here. These are little oil pockets and they're generally two tenths of a thousand deep. Give or take, depending on who did them. And if you can see in there, you can see them all the way down that side. And you can see them all the way into this area, then it starts to rub a little. So, I need to measure that, make sure it's okay, and if not, scrape it back. And I also need to measure these and make sure they're okay, or scrape them back. And then I need to measure the table and the apron and everything else. So I'm kind of working to where, now that this thing has exploded, getting everything ready and measuring it all in one day. How's that? We may have a measuring marathon. But anyway, oh. The saddle's in the tank getting de-greased. 
I've been out here working on taking all this apart, cleaning it up, getting it back. You wouldn't believe the amount of chips that were in it. You're getting the knuckle ready to paint. So, progress is being made. Now back to your regularly scheduled grinder repair. Now, tonight we're going to see if it'll work. There's a few little things on here that are different from things that you would buy that are new. And the main thing is these little caps right here. Now, these are not oilers. They're for grease. And basically this threads into the casting. And this top is hollow. And what you do is you fill this full of grease and then every once in a while you give the cap a twist and it forces grease into the, the bearings of the machine. Now this is all plugged up with black gunk. We're going to take them apart and see if we can get them all clean and then we'll put some good electric grease in them. Now the shield was gone off of this so we're going to have to make a new one. And when I got it you couldn't turn the wheel. So I took off the cover, and look what I found. Our old friend the mud dauber has moved right in, and it had totally locked up this wheel. If you look in here, I don't know if you can see it, but this wheel is so off-center. It's not even funny. Oh, and another problem I found was this ear has been broken off. So I'm going to turn a new circle and put it on there and weld it. Maybe not this week, but I will get it done. Need to pull the wheel off. See if we can get that. Another problem we found, or I found, was this. That needs to be straight across or inset to where it goes around this wheel. You can't have a gap like that. It's too easy to get something you're grinding caught in there, drug in your finger. I don't know what gloves. These are great little tools for doing this kind of work. We got all this loose and taken care of and cleaned up. It's time to uh, do a little bit of safety. Now, if you look at this wheel, man, it's hardly been used. The problem is all these embedded dirt. And this is embedded, and this is embedded, and this is embedded. It might be perfectly fine. But I was a paramedic for 16 years in Houston. And I have picked up patients that had a grinder explode on them. And it wasn't, wasn't pretty. So this isn't worth your life or disfigurement or even a trip to the ER. Always use good known wheels. Now this one, we're going to do a ring test on just for the heck of it. You take something like a pencil and you put it in and take something sharp, a hard piece of plastic works. I usually use a drumstick. I don't know if you can hear this. It 
It's flat. It's dull sounding. It doesn't ring like a bell. Here's a little one. Hear that ring? That means that this wheel is in pretty good shape. It probably doesn't have any internal fractures and it's not loaded up with junk. So, this wheel just a tiny little ring and not much at all. So I don't trust it. Didn't trust it in the first place. Now here's one. It's a brand new A36. Never been used. Looks great, doesn't it? There's no ring on that. It doesn't ring. I'll show you why in a minute. This one's dull. Something has permeated that wheel. I don't know if it was laying in oil. It was in a cabinet when I found it, along with a bunch of others. They were all good, but I don't trust looks alone, so I always do a ring test on them and just as dead as a doornail. So this is trash. Don't be fooled. With that being said, I'm not going to put a grinding wheel on this. I'm going to put a buffing wheel. Or excuse me, a buffing wheel on that side and a wire wheel on this side. Now this is a Norton, a very good quality. It says max 3750 RPMs. Well, this doesn't have any motor rating on it, but from the uh, catalog picture that I found, a three-phase motor this size runs 1750. So I think we're safe. Just now I need to see if we got something that'll make it fit on the shaft right. Well, that would work. Just have to take this spacer off. Now that we've got all that done, I'm going to put some of this electric motor grease in here. We'll see if we can make some go in. Was quite a ways down. Took all of that. Check the bearings as much as we could. <clears throat> now one thing that I'm going to do that I usually would never do is this has had the outer insulation skinned off. Well, all the conductors are fine. I'm going to go ahead and just tape this up for now. And hopefully when the cost of copper comes back down, I'll replace the whole thing. That's the only defect I've seen in this. Let's see this is what I'm doing. Okay, folks, now for the moment of truth. Did I buy a worthless piece of cast iron or a useful machine? This is the part where we turned it on. Now, 
this is a three phase motor. The electricity coming through this motor will kill you. If you accidentally touch this with your hand, it will make the muscles in your hand contract and grab hold. And you can't let go. Somebody has to knock you away. 110 is low enough that you jump back. It doesn't contract your muscles. This will kill you. In three phase, there are three wires. They all go to the motor. And depending on the correct wiring of the motor, how you put these three wires on your motor, in other words, depends on which way it rotates. If it's in phase, the motor will go the correct way. If it is not, you need to just do a simple thing and switch any of the two leads around. That will reverse a three-phase motor. Well, hooking up to my three-phase electrical system, I have no idea which three of these go where. So what I always do is I have a bunch of pigtails like this, and I hook them up so that I can determine, A, if it works or not. I've got a lot of machines coming through I can't wire up permanently. And if it does work, then I know which wires go to which when I wire it in permanently. So I'm going to start off by going black to black, green to green, and white to white. Well, actually, I'm not either. And this plug green is ground. So I'm going white to white. And when I rewire this, I'll put a four conductor lead on it and it'll have a ground on it. Best to be safe. I've already been shocked once this year. 360 joules right here in the back of my chest. You see, my heart stopped. Doctors reached over. I mean, it was very quick. I was on the operating table. And I was awake. The doctor leaned down and says, we're going to shock you. And I go, why? He says, your heart stopped. Oh, shock away. I was still conscious. My heart stopped. It went on walkabout. The weirdest feeling I've ever had. All right. It says off. Do you trust it? I don't. I have a three phase extension cord. It is wired in. Too bad Don's not here. This is when he usually does this. <laughs> so I guess I'm the guinea pig. It's spinning the right way the first time. Yay! And it works! This is going to be good. Sounds good, doesn't it? No vibration. 